Broadcasting from the far side of Enceladus, beaming in at the speed of light across the vast chasms of space, streaming directly into your brain, you're listening to the Spartacast League. I am Phelan, and joining us today are Attica and Gackle, so get ready and strap in, because it's been a while since we've been on the air, and a lot has happened. In the last month, America has been rocked by one of the most deadly school shootings in history, followed by multiple bombings from an attacker in Austin. Uh, both committed by people believed to be on the alt-right. It all accumulated this weekend here with millions taking to the streets to protest the NRA, the gun lobby, and irresponsible lawmakers who have stood by and allowed these massacres to continue. I went to one of these protests here, so did Attica. So Attica, what was your experience like at the March for Our Lives? So I want to preface this by saying that I'm in Arizona and Arizona is is very much a police state. They literally right now I can hear a police helicopter above my apartment. So in the way that Phoenix is organized is the downtown area, all of the government stuff is like packed into the west part of downtown and like sectioned off from the rest of the city. And that's where the march was. So I'd say there was probably about four, maybe five thousand people there. And they were very excited to be there. I could tell that they like felt that they were making a difference. And a lot of like high school kids, like this was something that I'm very glad that youth is politically engaged in because when I was in high school, I mean, the war was on and you were just thought to be a weirdo if you even cared. I'm very excited today that these kids are politically motivated to do something. But it was it was very much a certain kind of person. Like, I tell these were all the good high schools that were there. And all the parents who lived in a zip code where they got to send their kid to the good high school. Which I guess in a way makes sense. The people shooting up the schools are white nationalists. Like if, if if the school shooting were to happen and it was a it was a black guy, you just get called a thug and then it would fall off the news the next day. It just could be considered normal black people stuff, right? Like Yeah, there's shootings that happen in schools in inner cities that you don't hear about because it's a one off gang violence, that kind of thing. And this is totally different. Right. So these are definitely privileged middle class kids who are getting their school shot up by entitled other entitled middle class well to do kids. So it is kind of their issue. So other socialists I talked to was a problem. Why aren't there, you know, poor black people there? Why aren't the poor Hispanic community mobilized about this? And I was, you know, I pointed out like they're they're not the ones facing that kind of violence. You know, interestingly enough, I did see Black Lives Matter at the uh, protest in Eugene. I saw some too. Yeah, so they were there. uh, And I actually did try to get an interview with them uh, to put up on my Twitter, but they were actually kind of leaving. They were actually just like going into a restaurant to get something to eat. And so I didn't want to bother them with that. Also, another thing is the poor people that they're kind of complaining that weren't the protests. They have jobs, like they kind of have stuff to do. They don't really have time to go out for these protests quite often when they have to work two jobs just to barely afford a single bedroom apartment. Yeah, and and they get completely ignored. The quote, the resistance. I was probably the poorest person who participated in it, honestly. And I I had to stop because I was just so damn poor and working all the time. And I realized that it really was kind of a soccer mom movement because, you know, they're the ones who have the time to be politically active and go down to the state house and make the phone calls and emails, all of which, you know, as a socialist, I find is probably mostly useless because eventually I'm hoping they'll reach the conclusion that they're screaming of the slogan do your jobs is meaningless because their job literally is just to cater to the money interests of ceos it's not actually to represent the people and eventually maybe they'll catch on to that you know the the moms and the kids and the dads who are at this movement were very excited and very glad that they were there but when we started marching I had my red flag with me, by the way. And I got <laughs> asked, what does the red flag mean a lot? And, <laughs> and I was just like, wow, I really shouldn't be here, should I? This is this is not my people. <laughs> I explained, I didn't say, oh, I'm a communist, because that would get me accusations of being a Russian bot, right? But 
you know, I said, oh, it stands for, you know, oppressed people and, you know, uh, to people who are killed by power and you know, something, something that would fit that worldview. But so my biggest problem with the march was that basically it was just corralled in a circle around the government district that I was talking about on a Saturday when there's no government people there to watch it. It was purposefully kept from going through downtown. And when I realized we were turning, just like I put my head in my hands. I'm like, oh, no, they're turning. They're, they're actually they're following the police's directions. They could have just gone through the barricade and marched somewhere or they would have actually disrupted the like, daily life and the economy and forced people to take notice. But instead, they were corralled and kind of let to um, blow off steam is what I felt like it was. And I mean, the police have a ton of control in Arizona, so I don't know if this was standard for everywhere else, but they really just sort of let themselves be crowded in a circle and pat themselves on the back and talk about how cool their signs were. And like, you, you, you didn't disrupt anything. This wasn't a protest. This was a parade. This didn't do much. Well, yeah, you'll be in the news, but it'll fall out of the news the next day. That's one of the big problems in America right now is really, for the most part, Americans have kind of lost the ability to effectively protest because of this, uh, because they, they, they always they cut deals with the cops or whatever during the protest. So it, it always goes around the business sector, like you said, because they don't want to disrupt business. That would be economic terrorism. If somebody doesn't get that exchange of a dollar, it's going to be the end of the world. And I guess in defense of the liberals, in their worldview, people need that money and they're working for that money. And if we disrupt that their work, well, you know, we're the bad guys who made them not be able to earn that money that day. They don't take that further than think, well, wait, why are they working so hard for all this money that doesn't get them anything but the ability to work tomorrow for the same amount of money that doesn't get them anything but the ability to work tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. They don't go to that part of the problem so i can see how they do it out of the best of intentions but it still meant that it was a parade and not a protest though i mean it got plenty of news coverage it definitely for forced the issue into conversation that day it did it even it even got trump's attention which to be fair isn't that hard he's kind of like a cat you dangle something in front of him he's gonna <laughs> paw at it did you see what trump said uh, about the shooting that he he was upset because the uh, the school deputies didn't go in there with guns ablazing. They were hiding somewhere outside the, the the building or whatever. And he was like, "I would have went in there even if I didn't have a gun." Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, Cadet Bone Spurs that dodged the draft in Vietnam. He he's gonna go in there without a gun and save everybody. The biggest thing is that I think like, no one except the liberals who marched have a memory of this march. That's the effect of allowing themselves to be corralled in a circle. And I'm not saying, you know, go start a riot. No, I'm not saying, you know, in order for your protest to work, you have to break windows and burn cars. But like, God, even, you know, I hear, oh, but we, we need to do a peaceful protest. Like in the 60s, yeah, Martin Luther King walked over a bridge he wasn't supposed to and people got their face beat in for it. Like in the 60s, you didn't just go where the police said you went. You just decided to take your protest wherever the heck you wanted. There was none of this going to the police and setting a predetermined course for the protest so they can make sure, you know, no one sees it. And you know what was on the sidelines of about half of those those uh, big major protests uh, was Black Panther parties in, in the 60s and 70s with guns. Yeah, the protests today, are just, they're just not effective at doing anything other than garnering news coverage. No one's life other than the people who marched was impacted. No one had to stop and look at it. No one had to not be able to cross the street sign or, you know, go get their Jimmy John's sandwich across the street in their lunch break they'll mustard on their shirt and have that be the worst thing that happened that day i still i you still know. think that it was was a powerful impact if you were there then you would have heard the speeches and everything uh, the one that i went to because it, it was actually special in the fact that we had people there that spoke at that rally who were present and were victims of the Thurston shooting uh, in Thurston, Oregon, uh, 
across the uh, the river from where I live. Just the stories that they were telling about like how it impacts their lives. And this event happened in, in 98. And there's this woman talking about how it still affects her every day. So it was very in impactful to be there and be present. I do feel that with the news being there, with cameras being there, people did see it. They did understand, hey, 6,500 people were gathered downtown and marched approximately two miles from the courthouse to downtown and, and participated in this march. For the most part, there wasn't even that many counter protesters. I maybe saw only like a dozen. They were quite comical. I mean, they weren't a threat or anything like that. They were just badly mannered and yelling incoherently. That was the same at mine. I interrupted the news broadcast. Or so they had a camera and they were interviewing the Trump. I mean, it was full blown Trump, like America, everything, Trump flags, mullets. It was, it was, it was great. You it was. A you sent me the picture of that. Did you interrupt Mullet Man in specific? Because that was my favorite. No, I did not interrupt Mullet Man. I interrupted the chud with the hat that said communism isn't cool, who was standing there next to what I assume was his girlfriend or something who looked like 20 years older than him. Smoking uh, will do that to you. It was, these were some really like g weird, gross fringe people. Uh, and he had a cat, he had a hat that said, uh, communism isn't cool. And as he's doing the interview, in front of the camera, I lower my red flag and I wipe it across his face <laughs> over the hat. It's communism isn't cool. And you said it took him like five minutes to register this or something like that, like a, like an obnoxious I, amount of time. Because I, I was like doing it to all of them, kind of like I was flying it in, in 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 amongst their flags. You know, they finally just got fed up with it. I guess maybe it was a petty thing to do. These people obviously want to kill me, and most of the people around there. And you know, I brought this up when like the 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 liberal protest safety watch person was like, "Do you really think that's necessary?" Or no, do you really think it's appropriate right now? And I said. Oh, yeah, these people want to kill me. <laughs> In the exact words, she said, we can reflect on that later. That is the most liberal thing <laughs> I have ever heard. We can reflect on that later. I really, I just, I can't. They had to close the protest early. Not that there were, there were fights or anything. The more uh, uh, radical liberals were willing to heckle the protesters and like shout rude things at them. I heard over the, their loudspeaker, I was on the other end of the whole, like, the Capitol Square with all the statues. And I went running because I'm like, oh, sh shit, this is going to turn into a fight because, like, most of the people had left by then. And it was just, like, the really committed, angry people who were still there. But no, no, no fight broke out. So I, th I just... But, you know... That's my other big criticism. They allowed the Trump protesters to shut down their rally, you know, an hour early without a fight. What I find it funny is it took them about five minutes to register the fact that your your red flag did not, in fact, have a swastika on it. <laughs> well, OK, so I find that among the amongst these people, knowledge of communist symbolism is is very actually rare. They know the hammer and sickle. And to them, it just means Jew. And that's about all they know. Like, they don't know the red flag. They, they don't know the gear symbol. They don't know the, I guess they would know the red and black because of the Antifa. But like, they don't know the, the symbolism. You could probably walk amongst them with blatant socialist stuff on you that isn't a hammer and sickle and they'd have no idea. I'm actually really surprised that a lot of the memes that were spreading I actually didn't hear from the counter protesters the few that I actually ran into and I actually did try to interview a few people and put it up on my Twitter the counter protesters and they wouldn't let me interview them even though they're apparently pro free speech but they didn't want their speech heard by me you just looked like too much of a I, commie I know, Jew right? liberal. Well, well, I was, I was like, I was dressed up in all black too, and I looked like I might be Antifa. To be fair, but I also had a big medical cross on my freaking backpack as well. So they should have known. Hey, no, I got medical supplies in my backpack. I'm not really looking for a fight. To them, you're just a quote soft target at that point. Because they know you don't have weapons. You're there to kill people. So you're who they're going to take fun pot shots at in oh, the middle of the rally. Oh, fuck. No, I'm the mage. 
Darn it. To the mage. I'm a social justice mage. Thank you very much. Social justice mage. I heal the party oh. members. That's all I do. So basically you become the Krillin of the rally. Oh my god, I'm the first to die. No, but it, it is interesting because, like, I didn't hear a lot of the uh, the rhetoric. One of the things from right-wing media, the big narrative was that the, it never happened or the, the people that are involved in the media are all actors, all that kind of bullshit. I, I didn't actually hear that from, from the local counter-protesters, which I'm kind of glad they were rude, but they weren't that rude. Uh, they probably think it, and I'm not going to put it past them because they seem like that level of people. But I just, I found it just absurd that the right-wing media including alex jones of course no surprise there was just hardcore push into this conspiracy theory with as absurd as it is even to the point where alex jones and his buddy over at natural news got banned for spreading the conspiracy theory speaking of him going because he's going through a lawsuit for that isn't he yeah several actually i believe i think there's like three or four lawsuits against alex jones going on right now but i I could be wrong it it may just be like one redundant one but i think it's several i know that remington rand is filing for bankruptcy and this was met to the cheers of you know the waving crowd and you know oh they're they're you know we're winning and the guns are going out of business and no there's there's so many infection with guns and and a lot of people were saying like they're doing this because it puts a stop on a lawsuit they're facing after sandy hook one of the the big responses though that i noticed there because i did actually read their manifesto and everything and i mostly agreed with it and you actually sent me the copy of it and i read it this morning in the in the news because the guardian had republished it on uh, their website from their school newspaper site but there was one big point here that you did have a problem with attica yeah and it basically sinks their entire manifesto is that they want police surveillance on mentally ill people not not like background checks on mentally ill people like literally just police surveillance on mentally ill people to make sure they're not gonna kill anyone I, it made me lose all support i felt embarrassed that i went to their march as a communist who's Marx words the the disarming of the proletariat should be frustrated by force if necessary betraying Marx himself to try to find some kind of common solidarity with the liberals and then they turn around and be like you know what we really need yeah we need to criminalize mental illness that'll solve this issue it just it sinks their entire manifesto because everything else on it is fine okay cool yeah gun controlled stuff that we've been saying for 10 years and then there's this steaming pile of shit that just like Oh, so you're going to target me now. Uh, Okay, screw you. I I don't even really think that it's an idea that they necessarily decided to put on there. It's such an obvious thing to like sink a movement with, right? Like that that one thing in a progressive movement, even progressive people are going to say, uh, no, about that would just stop it in its trap. Like, I don't want to go in conspiracy theory territory of like, they're being manipulated. You know, it, it is such an obvious non sequitur. This is a thing that, you know, one of these things is not like the other. All this cool, great common sense stuff. And then let's criminalize the mental Ill, mentally ill. If they don't do something about that soon, they've screwed their movement. Yeah, I saw that. And the first thing that I, I thought was, wait a second, there's already something like this anyway in the whole process of dealing with mentally ill patients and patients with psychological issues. If you're seeing a therapist and they have reason to believe that you're committing criminal activity or going to commit criminal activity because you've made a threat or your behavior is just that so much off, there's a procedure for that. It's not breaking privacy laws because there's privacy laws in place to protect people and protect their rights. Just because you have a mental illness doesn't mean that you're going to commit a crime. Plenty of people that are mentally ill don't commit crimes and there's different levels of mental illness. Of course, you have people all the way at the, the, the you know psychopathic, sociopathic end of the scale. But there's also just people like mental illness could just be hyperactivity, autism, or anxiety disorder, or even depression. Like, that's awesome mental illness. So it singles out a lot of people here, and their proposal breaks the current system that does protect people because a therapist right now has to go to 
a judge to have your rights removed. There's due process, which is how things are supposed to work in this country according to the, the Constitution. The judge looks at the case and says, yes, we're allowed to investigate this, and then it gets handed over to the appropriate authorities. That is how that's handled. And the thing is that they tried to do that with the shooter. He didn't own a gun at the time. There was nothing. He showed signs of being violent, and they raised the, you know, the flag about it, and but he didn't own a gun at the time. It was just sort of a case closed, there's nothing we can do thing about it. They could have actually had him Baker acted at the time because he was showing uh, behaviors of self-harm. And Baker acting in Florida, that's where a judge basically has you committed to a uh, psychiatric ward for a period of time for observation or for care. Once you have been Baker acted, you get put on a list and it basically bans you from owning firearms. So they could have Baker acted him and they did try and it got rejected. Not because he didn't have any weapons, but because the state of Florida decided there wasn't a threat when there was loads and loads of evidence otherwise. These people just weren't doing their job. Another thing with mental illness being brought up in the whole gun control controversy and all this is honestly blaming mental illness is such a massive cop out and it doesn't address the actual issues here. It doesn't and it blames mentally ill people. It sets them up to be placed in a dangerous situation. It creates an environment where mentally ill people are less likely to seek help uh, if they know that the confidentiality between them and their doctor can be that easily broken. They know that the therapist is the German police spy. They're not going to go see the therapist. That's why I avoid any therapist with a German accent. It just it feels too nazi <laughs> to Speaking of guns, I might be going to like get a uh, firearms license here this year sometime. Oh, great. You're adding to the problem. <laughs> we need to surveil you now. Look, no, here's the thing. Like, There's so many other people that have guns that are very, frankly, horrifying. And if given the opportunity and, could, and if they could get away with it, they would go and do some pretty bad things. And I feel like constantly they don't know how to use it, though. Like, I always see yeah. pictures of them holding it unsafe. And they'll go to a range and they'll shoot $20 worth of bullets into a piece of paper that stands still on a post and doesn't move. As someone who's been, like, raised with guns and such, it pissed me off so much when I see people treating guns like fucking toys. Yeah, like, it's, they're, they're not it's, toys. It's disgusting. That one picture of, fuck, who is it, Lauren Salvin or something, who tucked a pistol into an elastic waistband of a pants or something like that, like spandex or something. Literally, like, the most unsafe way, and it's, it was so bad. You've, you've probably seen that. I saw that, and the first thing I thought was, oh my god, I hope that gun is not loaded. Because that was just instinct at that point. Uh, I was just like, wow. How, how can you do that? You are supposed to be in control of that gun at all times. You are supposed to assume that that gun is loaded at all times. And you are not supposed to point it at anybody, including yourself. A lot of the people at the gun rally were holding... Uh, the counter protesters who brought their fucking M4s out to shove in all the liberals' faces, right? They were, a lot of them were holding it really stupidly. One guy had the gun slung with the barrel pointing up at an angle where it would be pointing at people's head they don't know how to fucking use these things and see this is this is why i do actually agree with like a modicum of sensible gun control laws because yes you should have to prove that you are going to be responsible with this weapon that you know how to handle it it's like driving a vehicle and getting a, you know, a, a driver's license you need to be able to prove that you can drive that vehicle. If you can't prove that you're going to be safe with a weapon, you shouldn't get that weapon. You should not be allowed to have that weapon. If you're somebody that has a criminal background, specifically a violent criminal background, then no, you, you should not have access to weapons. If you are somebody, for instance, like I, I don't want to come down on mentally ill people, but if you have a severe mental illness that has a proclivity towards violence, then maybe you should not have 
a weapon. That's sensible gun control laws. It's not targeting anybody who is a what what they like to call a law abiding or just a good Samaritan or good citizen. With Canada, I think the the ratio of like guns per capita is pretty close to what it is in the U.S. or like not that far off, and our gun crime is way way lower. By I don't even understand to... this. Like you guys have, you're flooded with guns like us. Is it just different types of guns or, or, or like some guns are more restricted and we probably have better you have to have uh, go through a firearms course to be able to buy a gun and you have to get the license and it's just we just have more sensible laws about it up here and what amazes me is that the US apparently has so much trouble despite how much money they pour into the police with the US is basically a goddamn surveillance state at this point and they still can't get shit done the police aren't there to protect the, the citizens like you think they are they're there to oh, yeah. defend the property oh. rights of the wealthy i don't think that we could get rid of guns immediately like it's it's so heavy it, we wouldn't be able to do it within like the next few decades and unfortunately it kind of seems like with how things are we might not be able to get rid of them because of, of like say if something happens like say things do kind of get really terrible in the next like 10 to 40 years so so like so, to, so to mention this one thing because there's a you, you, bunch of communists out there screaming you can't do gun control we need the guns for the revolution we're leftists we run the machines we run the, the steel mills and the machine shops and the welding we can make the guns when we need to Right now, we need to disarm the opposition. We shouldn't worry about whether we can go buy the guns or not when the revolution comes. It's just silly. Yeah, right. That, and that like, is and like, like, that is true. You like to say, Attica, the gun culture in America is pretty much owned in a, in a large part by the NRA. There are whole areas of the United States where it's really hard to get access to a weapon or a license if you don't go through the NRA because they're the ones that own the licensing program or, or whatever. They they own the gun range. United States works at wordships of military industrial complex. Yes, we do. We fly jets over football games, okay? They uh, You stand up for the anthem. They put the big flag out in the middle of the field. Uh, they have the soldiers salute it, and then right when they sing Land of the Free, Home of the Brave, jets fly over the, the stadium, and they have that red, white, and blue stuff coming out their tail ends. It's not a totalitarian state if we do it, right? That's how it works, right? Exactly. Hey, hey, you know what? It, it, it gets even better because this year, we're going to have a military parade. That's right, Trump. Trump. Trump's going to give us a military parade. Yeah, and it's gonna be World War One themed. Yeah, like, yeah. He, he they was... did their best to make it not seem like they're parading around the modern Abrams tanks and crap. They specifically actually said that they weren't gonna roll tanks as part of the parade, and the reasoning the Department of Defense gave was they didn't want to mess up the roads. Although the real reason that the Department of Defense doesn't want to do it is they don't like Trump and they don't want to have anything to do with this freaking parade. They want to do everything they can to make it not be about him, which is why they went with World War One. Right. Like if he's fucking cornered them into doing this, they're going to do their damn best. I like what they did actually, uh, where they turned it around. They're like, they were like, "Yeah, we'll do it. Uh, we'll do a World War One theme." I was actually very impressed with that, uh, to tell you the truth. I wish they did a World War Two theme because that can be about killing Nazis. I mean, it, they could have, but the the reasoning is logical. It's it's to celebrate the centennial of the German defeat uh, of World War One. Also, one more thought I had with gun control and everything. Like, it's, it's I'm kind of in a stance where we need gun control. We need sensible gun control laws. But at the moment, like, there's no way we could completely get rid of guns, kind of like how Australia did. Here's the thing. Like, in, in ideal conditions, we could. In ideal times, we could. But we're really True. not in ideal conditions. These are not ideal times. We're, we're kind of at a point where maybe nothing will happen. Maybe something will happen next 20 to 40 years or something or even sooner 
and let's hope not, but we don't know for sure. Well, I want the revolution to come. Like, I don't want to, like, sacrifice the revolution just to have things go back to normal. Because normal was shit. Like, things are, are, like, bad now. But does no one remember the malaise, the the crushing, just defeated attitude of the recession? Of the Obama, there was nothing, nowhere to go, nothing to do, just drudge along. At least things are happening right now. Things are moving, and there's there's stuff to do and get involved in. Whereas before, yeah. it was just like, how do I get ramen at the end of the week? Here's the thing, though. Like, just recently, both the Republicans and Democrats voted for some laws to deregulate the banks and we're going to have another situation like 2008 within 10 years if not sooner probably sooner as fast as things have happening and the market's already looking kind of shaky so if it goes down and then the bank thing happens it's it's going to go way down my thing with the gun control thing like you said like ideal times and, and all that stuff I don't think the gun control in this country will work because we have all these underlying issues. So so what's really going to happen is is that okay, so they're not going to commit mass murders with guns, but you know what else can you can commit a mass murder with a bomb. And you know what somebody did this month? Set off multiple bombs in a city, a major city. Just put them on their on their their porches whatever, set up some trip wires and it's not like it takes a genius to make a bomb. As scary as that sounds, that's that's what it would come to is these same people that were shooting up schools or whatever, they would just move on to making bombs and no, their parents wouldn't figure it out because their parents weren't smart enough or engaged enough or whatever to figure out that they were stockpiling weapons and planning a school shooting. So I don't think they're going to figure that out either. No one's going to stop. It- any any of this from happening because it would infl- it would uh, infringe on the profits for weapons in the United States. The whole reason, like I even went to the march, is like, okay, I know the real issue is is alienation, the lack of a future, and the desperation that is making these kids easy to radicalize into terrorist actions. That's exactly but- what it is. It's terrorism. It's right wing, yeah. white it, nationalist. It is. But, but here's the thing in this country, we can't actually bring any of those up because that logically concludes criticizing capitalism and maybe doing something about it. So the closest we get is to take the guns away, which, okay, so they won't kill 17 kids at their school, but they'll still be alienated, they'll still be desperate for a future, and they'll still be trying to figure out how to carry out those terrorist actions in another way, which probably won't be as deadly. They'll end up stabbing, you know, their SJW Jew classmate or whatever, and it won't really make the news and the liberals will consider it a job done. Because we can't actually get to the issues. I guess this is the best we're going to get. The issues aren't being addressed. It's right-wing nationalism. It's toxic masculinity. It's people being disenfranchised and realizing that they don't have futures so they don't have any other outlets and they feel that this is the route that they need to go and they need to take out as many people as they can sadly enough to feel fulfilled and feel like they've done something but really all this kind of leads back into the fact that these alt-right groups are targeting our youth and little is being done about it so you you have different paths that you can take so you can step up and you can do something about the alienation you can get engaged and get people involved to make life better for everybody Uh, or you can go down this like rabid fascist rabbit hole of conspiracy theories and this is where we end up when people take that route of fascism and so it really needs to be addressed the fact that the alt-right is taking advantage of and recruiting children. Their ideas are so basically dumb and easily disproven. It takes a child to buy into them. I also think that the alt-right have a good sense of how dumb... Okay, I shouldn't say dumb. How... Naive. Because it's not even really necessarily their fault. There's a huge technological gap between kids and their parents. 
So their parents have no idea what they're doing on the internet. They just think their kids, you know, on Facebook and looking at memes, they have no idea that he's going to white nationalist websites and getting radicalized to think he's the master race. And that's why it's always a surprise, you know, whenever they, like, shoot up a school or whatever. That's why the liberals still don't necessarily have a full conception of what the alt-right is and where it comes from and what they're doing. They just know that they like Trump and Trump's bad and he is bad and the alt-right's bad. But they don't really quite grasp what an adolescent childhood spent on 4chan has done to their kids. They don't know what 4chan is. They, they know YouTube and Facebook and like their recipe blog or whatever. And that's the internet to them. Well, uh, I, I think a good message to parents, if they're listening, they, they better learn what 4chan is. They better learn what 8chan is. They better learn what Reddit is. And they damn well need to start learning uh, what sites like the Daily Stormer and the other hardcore sites are. Because there's too many of them here to list. And they need to be aware that these things exist. They need to know what to look for in their browser history. If they're sharing a computer with their kid or whatever, maybe go in there and check. Say, hey what's this website here why why are you looking at this you know have a conversation with your kid and if you see them you know looking at something questionable maybe ask them approach them about it say hey why why are you looking at this you know is there why do you feel this way because what it seems like here is it seems like a lot of times that these cases not necessarily in the most extreme like the the school shootings but like i'd read an article about these his parents and they were just totally naive about it uh and you read the article too it was called i i lost my son to the alt-right movement uh by the cut these poor parents were just broken-hearted upset about the path that their their kid had taken and they were afraid that he was going to go to jail but they were kind of hoping that he would because you know maybe they'll straighten him out or whatever which is kind of <laughs> like, like that's that's like the worst thing that could happen because then he's just going to get tucked he's away in some yeah he's in a white nationalist prison gang yeah you can whoop great <laughs> Yeah, they're not going to um, whip him into shape. The the white nationals prison gangs there are going to whip him into shape. He's going to he's going to come out thinking he's an Aryan super soldier or whatever, and he's not. And he's going to get himself killed, and then their parents are going to have a dead kid on their hands. Although he won't be a kid anymore. Two things about that. One, I am very glad that my parents never went through the shared computer web browser history and found the giant dick herm fox porn that I was looking at when I was 16. Also, if parents did and they found alt-right stuff and they asked their kid, why do you feel this way? Would they even understand like baby boomers and even Generation X a lot, they don't get how shit the world is for our generation. They just I don't get it. It's, they just live in another reality where, like, I don't know, the good times are just going to come again or something. Or, like, literally, we just have to work harder. Or It's like they don't realize that the things that allowed them to build a life that existed in the 60s are dead and don't exist anymore. Like, they can acknowledge it. A, a lot of what drives kids to, like, go to 4chan and get radicalized is because they can't bring these issues up with their parents. Because when they talk to their parents about how, like, you know, I'm not going to go to college and there's no future. I'm just going to have a shit job and I don't understand why. Their parents just look at them weird and just say, oh, well, you know, just try hard. Oh, well, you know, I heard that you can get money for college and it's free. What happens is they stumble across these people on these websites and they're basically telling them, you know, hey, it's, it's not your fault. But you know whose fault it is? The Jews. You know why you don't have a job? Because your boss has to hire a black person before he can hire you. Because that's how affirmative action works. That's what they tell these people. And they tell them, you have this great history as a white American. Uh, what are you? Are you Are you German? I, they, have, they have this great strong history. Before you know, they became industrialized and they were a major like philosophical center. You know, even before that. They had this great badass mythology too. So they just, they sell these people on this idea that they have this like long heritage and everything. And that because of this, because of tradition and because of nothing that they ever did in their own lives, 
they're suddenly entitled to greatness. Simply by being white or by being German or English or whatever. Did you guys catch that or did I drop off? And God, if they come back at that, at their parents, their parents are just gonna kind of be bewildered and probably report them to the police state. I mean, God, if I, if I had a dollar for every parent that I heard of whose solution was calling the police on their kids, I would not be living where I'm living. Well, that's that's it's, because pe- a lot of parents also don't know that therapy is an option or can't afford it. So they think the next best thing is to call the cops and scare the bejesus out of their kid. Yeah, except the cop doesn't come and scare the bejesus out of their kid. The cop just comes and shoots them. Or arrests them and takes them to jail. Yeah. And then the, and then the kid realizes, oh, you know, for talking about my problems, I get sent to jail. So I better not talk about my problems and retreat back into my masculinity as far as I can go and become a cold, emotionless shell. Guess I don't have free speech. Not even that. Just doing the things that we were told to do. If you feel bad, tell an adult and talk about your feelings. And well, they did that. They got sent to jail. So now everything they were told was a lie and they're in jail for trying to express their feelings and talk about their problems. God, I really am oppressed. Or you get a a, Jews or you get ridiculously masculine man dad that tells you to shut up, quit quiet and quit being such a pussy about your problems. Yeah, (laughs) true. I mean, it's not like the alt-right kids necessarily all come from like normal liberal households like there's a lot of traditional like denial of basic feeling yeah there's a lot of that there especially with the school shooters you'll see that with the parent turns out that a lot of them are from these like like you said really traditional really religious households where you know like that's that's how the dad was or or he was abusive or not present uh which is another theme on that one I just sort of have to wonder, is this all about getting to them first? Should the left try to spend more time in places kids hang out on the internet, which I don't know where that is anymore. When I was a kid, you lied about your age, got a Second Life account, trolled in sandbox sims, and had really bad looking pixel cyber sex. Uh, so who, I don't know where kids are. Club Penguin? I don't know. Uh, are they I, are they making Nazis on Roblox. Club Penguin yet? Okay, so when I was a kid, we didn't have Second Life. We had this thing called IRC and Yahoo Chat. And you would go there and you would have freaky cyber sex with strangers or whatever. To be honest with you, I didn't do a lot of like cybering and stuff like that uh, back when I was in high school. I was the nerdy person that would just rage debate people online like I do now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you get trotsky from all the leftist groups. You know what? I didn't do a lot of leftist groups back then. Uh, I actually... I actually like to uh, spend a lot of time in like like the Wiccan and Pagan chats because that's what I was at the time. So it was kind of like a dorky, edgy <laughs> Pagan at that point. You know, you know, you and Dio and so many people on the left that I know started just as like, like not trollers in like the right wing sense where they're just trying to be offensive, but like literally trying to like make up the most ridiculous things to get people going. So many leftists came out of something awful in that kind of place. It's funny. I I have an appreciation for humor and for a certain type of satire, even though I don't really, there's certain types of satire I really just don't like, but there is like, I do like a little bit of edginess, but liberals get the bullet too <laughs> tank yeah but what you were talking about earlier though like with the police state and and with youth like yeah the police aren't trustworthy uh, it's just like the other day a black youth was shot 20 times in his yard in his own yard for basically just holding a cell phone he had a cell phone in his hand and that's why they shot because apparently they thought it was a gun and the entire reason that they shot him was is because they ha- they got a report that a black person was going around the neighborhood breaking into houses. They were able to capture Dylan Roof alive and they weren't able to let this kid live. 
not to downplay the fact that the police just shot a guy in his yard. He had a phone in his hand just because, quote, there was a black guy going around robbing places. And then what, they shot him 20 times? They shot him 20 times. And this was where, Seattle? Sacramento, California. Like these kids, you know, these gun control kids should really freaking like understand the, the, the police shouldn't get the guns either. Like a tweet that I keep seeing going around being quoted in like the socialist chats and stuff is literally does gun control mean the police too? And it's right. They're really doing as much damage as the school shooters when they bust into a place and empty their full AR clip and into in just, just some guy who happened to be there. Oh my god, uh, I uh, I had a police officer like point at me during the uh, the rally, so I I, I kind of like got up close enough to him where we could we could talk and everything, and and I'd ask him. I was like, I saw you guys point at me. Is there a problem? And he's like, no, sir, uh, we're just surveilling the area. And I'm like, hey, just curious. Do you think you could surveil the area without these guns? Do you think you could go a day without having your weapon on you? Oh, and did they pull their gun? No, they, they didn't. They didn't pull their gun or anything like that because they're trained not to do that. And this is Eugene. They expect this kind of stuff from us. And they're like, no, I, I really couldn't do that. He's like, I need my weapon on me at all times. So, you know, it's kind of funny. We, I, I actually, I, I went around, I, I asked several cops this, you know, at, at a distance as we were walking by. I was like, hey, would you think you'd be able to go a day without that? And they're like, no. <laughs> just like straight up, just like, no. <laughs> the alt-right has basically went into a state of coll collapse. Yeah, and furries did it. Yes, we, yes, Not we did. Not even kidding. But, but here, here's the thing. You know, you know, the first thing that happened though was this like freaking trailer park drama with the workers party. And do you know the story behind that, or are you? Even it all ended with a literal cuckolding. <laughs> oh my fucked, god! The guy fucked his father-in-law's wife. You're right. And so, something. so what? What happened I don't was even, even something like that. His, his father-in-law. <laughs> that the leader of the traditional workers party, I think his name's Andrew Anglin or something like that, was banging his wife, cheating on his current wife with, with him. And he was upset, he went to his trailer, his wife was there, they got into an altercation, his wife called the cops, he still hadn't calmed down, he was yelling at his wife for his wife to tell the cops to leave, and he just lost it in front of the cops and like smacked his wife and they, they heard that he was smacking her around in the trailer and they stormed his trailer. I did not literally, I did not know this literally took place in a trailer. I assumed this was in an apartment. God, that's so sad. This is trailer park level drama right here. I really couldn't find like a more fitting way for that to, to end the traditional work, workers party. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. The guy was so desperate for attention thereafter. He was basically like, you know, you know what the alt-right needs to be like? The alt-right needs to be like alt-furry. Those guys are ace. They're brave. They're in their fursuits and they're getting out there. And I'm like, oh. Really? That's this what we is got. How desperate you've gotten? How do they take themselves so seriously? Like it's honestly, it's it's embarrassing. Who? <laughs> Traditional Workers Party or uh, Alt Furry? Alt Furry. Well, they got a little bit of a self-esteem boost there for about thirty seconds until they heard the trailer park story, and that's really covering up for that. They're a joke now, but not to downplay like the serious threat that they were like a year ago with literally swatting conventions. And I'm still convinced that there's gotta be some kind of connection between them and their bullshit and like the, 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 the chlorine jar from MFF years ago. There's no way that there isn't some kind of something. On top of that, Richard Spencer, he's went back to his lair because he's not having fun anymore. You're not funny anymore, He-Man. 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 He -Man. Yeah. You're not fun anymore. But you You're know, not I'm fun going... anymore, He-Man. Yeah. I'm taking my toys and going back to my lair. <laughs> but one thing that I, I will say, just to kind of end it on there, uh, Attica, in regards to Alt Furry, uh, just is that 
I am absolutely convinced at this point, given the kind of stuff that they're into, if you get my drift and the amount of, uh, what's the word, degeneracy, that's, that's what I'm looking for, that they're into, that at this point, I am absolutely certain all furries for Sonas are based off of the animal they fucked. And there's no horse alt furries. That's because they don't survive. They're just too afraid to, to, to take the behemoth. No, no, or they do and they don't survive. <laughs> God. They're so... It's all such an embarrassment. It, it is, it is. And you know, you know the best part about it, about alt furry and the thing that happened on Tumblr today, where they, like Tumblr found like 20 or so accounts that were linked to the FSB, the Russian uh, spy agency. And some of them were furry accounts and some of them were really popular ones that even some of my leftist furry friends had at times reblogged. I knew sort of from the beginning of this fight that this wasn't just something local to the fandom that like w furries literally saved the world like we blew through alt furry we defeated the nazis and took on vladimir putin as the rainbow animal coalition you, it, it, and we won they're in tatters the alt-right has to try to get their their support and they're they're just arguing with each other over which one of them is more of a degenerate and it's just like it's amazing i always knew the fandom had a huge source of political power just because of the way that we're structured we're not beholden to a bunch of market fads like all the other fandoms where it's about what anime you know you need to go and buy or what pony you need to go and buy the tactics that they tried to use I... against furry that worked for all the other fandoms didn't work because we ultimately control our own fandom. There wasn't a company that like had to worry about looking bad if their fans took up a position about something. I like that I can hear the police state uh, in the background there, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, they're going hard tonight all the time. Helicopters and police. It's tanks, not yet, right? Tank. Not, not yet, not, no tanks yet. I mean, they do I mean, have tanks, but... Well, they have MRAPs, which are like tanks, but without the barrel, basically. I saw a picture of one, and it's like, there's a little police sign on the side that folds up. And it's like, yeah, because no one's going to think you're the police if you just cover the sign. No one's going to know. It's a foolproof disguise. We're undercover, folks. <laughs> Put a giant cardboard box over it, they'll never know. <laughs> it's like a gag from Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> you get the little Nazi dude in there, I know nothing! <laughs> it's literally what this whole thing has felt like. It has felt like a Hogan's Heroes episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're all, 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 all of us are just fucking like running around with, with Hogan doing all these ridiculous things to fool all these stupid Nazi furries. I, I have to wonder if like you would went, go back in time and you were to ask somebody uh, like anti-racist actions, which is basically what became Antifa like 30 years ago. Like, you, let's say, like, you're in the 80s. You're like, hey, you know, a bunch of people in animal costumes uh, with these things called fursonas where they draw themselves in animal forms. Uh, they're going to be uh, allied in a fight against neo-Nazis in the distant future. And the Russian state. <laughs> and the Russians. And they're going to be like, you mean the Soviet Union? No, the Russians. And they're going to be oh, like, what I'm about so the Soviet Union? I'm so sorry. The future sucks. <laughs> Be like, oh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I just spilled the beans. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's it's 1988. I should not have said that. <laughs> Man, if I went back to elementary school me and told myself that when I grew up, all of my friends would be completely obsessed with My Little Pony, that I already wouldn't believe myself. 
if I went back and I told myself that Donald Trump is going to be president and furries are going to defeat the new Nazis and the in Nazis. the internet war, that like I would just be nuts. And the Nazis Weird. were all going to be the ones into My Little Pony. Yeah, really. <laughs> like this, this is the most. Like we're all just like in the start someone somewhere turned on the infinite improbability drive and this is just us going through the different iterations of the improbabilities until they turn off the infinite improbability drive and it's all gonna go back to normal and we're gonna go what the hell is that we gotta look back on it to be like one big hangover <laughs> There's no way, there is no way that these, these two years are going to be explainable to future generations. It just, it, there's no point of reference for this. I, I, I shit's fucked. well, what's going to happen is, is like all relics of civilization, except for like a few parts, including furries are, are going to be remaining. And so, like, when future archaeologists go to dig stuff up, they're kind of like, man, these guys must have been gods or something. No. It'll just be a solid bronze statue of Dio with, with, with her hammer and sickle holding the torn flag of alt furry. That's all that will remain of Western civilization by the time we communists are done with it. Her ripping up the, the Kekistan flag. Yeah. All of Western civilization burning around her. And with that image, we're going to go ahead and sign off tonight. We hope to see you guys in the next couple weeks or so. Maybe even sooner. We're going to try to get episodes out a little bit more frequently than we have been in the past. Because it has been a while. But, hey, I had some dental work I had to do. Everybody has jobs here for the most part. So, good night and good luck. So, for those of you still listening, Attica has a cat. And it doesn't have a name. Okay, so she had a name. And her name was Mama Cat. And she was the neighborhood cat. And I adopted her. And she just kind of moved in. And I raised her last litter, and then I got her fixed. So I can't call her Mama Cat anymore. Uh, so now she's just Cat, and she can't just be Cat. And so she needs a name. And one day, I am going to be an important socialist revolutionary. <laughs> and you're going to know that you named my cat when I take my famous picture, like Lenin, sitting in my chair, petting my cat, talking about leftist discourse... You're going to know that you named that cat and that that will be your claim to fame in socialist history. But it's a girl cat in case that wasn't obvious. So, like, don't tell me to name her Stalin or Lenin or Trotsky or something. All right. So that's what we're doing this week here. So if you have any suggestions, go ahead, put them in the comment box below. Or you can tweet at me, Gackle. Uh, you can't tweet at Attica because he's no longer on Twitter. But he is on Mastodon, and his information is like, on the video. Barely. I'm barely on Mastodon, okay? I need to get another Twitter. It's been long enough. All right, so that's what we're doing this week. See you guys next week. Thank you. Take care. We love you. Like, comment, and subscribe.